The pros and cons of Windows 10, the NSA makes a promise, and a pledge to prevent weaponized AI. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 389 for Monday, July 27th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash technight. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to today's tech news. Only 48 hours until Windows 10 will be unleashed upon the world, sort of. The latest operating system from Microsoft includes the brand new Edge browser that's rumored to be faster and more stable than Chrome. You'll now see the new tablet mode only if you're running Windows on a tablet as opposed to being force-fed the new keyboard unfriendly interface, as some of us were with Windows 8. Microsoft calls Windows 10 familiar, personal, productive, friendly but some of us are still a little bit suspect. Joining us today to discuss what you need to get ready for Windows 10 is Matt Weinberger, tech reporter from Business Insider. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thanks for having me. So what if I hated Windows 8? Should I upgrade to Windows 10? So far, it seems pretty cool. I mean, Windows 8 did a lot of things wrong, but their heart was in the right place as far as making it ready for touchscreen computers, right? So Windows 10 takes all of the stuff about Windows 7 that people actually liked insofar as it worked and was good and is combining it with some of the touchscreen stuff that they learned uh, from Windows 8 and putting it all together in something that so far seems pretty cool. So you say that in the insider version of Windows 10, the beta, that's the one that beta testers have been able mm -hmm. to try. There's a lot to love, but CNET reports that in the newest build that was just rolled out over the weekend, the update causes a crash if you try to uninstall, uninstall a program using control panel instead of using the more modern settings screen. Do you think it's going to be ready in two days? I think it will. Um, that kind of stinks. But on the other hand, I mean, show me a Windows launch or, or a software launch at all without some big old bugs. Um, the nice thing about Windows 10 and the thing that I think is going to, for, for every one person that it turns off, and it will, um, I think the fact that you can't turn off updates on Windows 10 is going to save a lot more headaches than it causes. Um, the nice part there is that if and when a fix for this problem is available, it'll come out immediately and everyone will already have it. So, you know, your, your, your grandfather isn't going to call you at three in the morning begging you for a fix because they'll already be rolled out automatically. Right. I mean, they went back and forth with that, you know, just uh, and the, the update process could be really confusing and people weren't getting their updates or they mm -hmm. decided that they maybe didn't want to get their updates. But now with Windows 10, you're going to have to get them whether you want them or not. Yeah. And again, I think that ultimately it's going to be a good thing. Um, there are always going to be power users who hate the idea. And as we talked about before, there is there, there's this tool where if you really hate or if a Windows update is really super broken, Microsoft does have kind of an inside baseball -y kind of way to hide that from you. But the nice part about Windows 10 is that they're really committing to getting more fixes out faster, speedier, automatically out to everybody. So ultimately, I think that there's going to be fewer headaches than with past versions of Windows. Uh, now, there's been some confusion about what it means that the upgrade to Windows 10 will be free. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, so it's the, the 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 part to keep in mind is that what they're selling, what, what they're giving you is a free upgrade from Windows 7 or 8 to Windows 10, um, which means that just because you own a copy of Windows 7 sitting in a desk or somewhere doesn't mean that you're legally entitled to getting Windows 10 for free on every new computer that you buy. What it means is that for any computer that already has Windows 7 or 8.1 for the next year and after the next year, who knows? But for the next year, you can upgrade to Windows 10 completely for free. And why are they doing this? They're doing this. They have a bunch of big plans for Windows 10. I think they're aiming for 3 billion devices on Windows 10 in the next three years. And if I have that, if I have that number slightly off, I'm sure I'll get a tweet about it. Um, but they want a lot of people on the platform. That's for a bunch of reasons. Uh, Office 365, which a lot of which a lot of people already have, you know, that's that's however much you're paying for 10 bucks a month. Uh, over and over again, every month for perpetuity. And the nice thing about Windows 10 and also the scary thing about Windows 10 is that it integrates with all of that stuff so deeply out of the box that they think that once you have Windows 10, you're gonna be way more likely 
to buy more services, more subscriptions, more stuff that all leads to more money going into their pockets. So not everything is free in Windows 10. You have a piece in uh, Business Insider today about how now Solitaire is built into the operating system. It wasn't built into Windows 8, but yes. you have to pay if you want to play Solitaire without the ads. That's right. So you can play as much Solitaire as you want without it, just to be totally clear. But if you want to remove the ads, they want a buck fifty a month, which is like cool, I guess. Like good for them figuring out a way to give out Solitaire for free. But on the other hand, do you really want ads in your Solitaire? Yeah. I mean, I could go to the dollar store and buy right. three packs of regular cards every month for a dollar and play Solitaire without looking at any ads. Yeah, but I challenge you to do that on a crowded airplane, you know? So I think that they're kind of banking on, they're banking on the addiction of, of hardcore Windows Solitaire players. My grandmother is a huge fan of Solitaire, and I know she'd probably put up with the ads, but she would not be happy about it. Right. So addict, they're after the addicts. I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, whatever works. The super easy. So will I be able to buy a new computer with Windows 10 in two days on July 29th? Yeah, there's going to be a few models available. I know that Dell has some. Um, I'm sure the other major manufacturers do as well. But a lot of them are holding back their their new computers uh, until back to school shopping, the holiday shopping season later in the year. Um, that's for a bunch of reasons, just because more people buy more computers later in the year. And also because you kind of get the sense that some of them might be just waiting a little bit just to make sure everything's copacetic before they before they start pushing it on everybody in the world, you know? Yeah, I mean, they've they've been burned in the past from Windows 8 and exactly. to Windows 7. Uh, people had some problems with that, too. I mean, people, right. people were still, a lot of people are still on Windows XP and unwilling to give it up. That's right. Well, because once something works, for, for, for the vast majority of people, if something works, there's no incentive to them. You know, the, the, the new shiny factor of a new Windows isn't sufficient for them, you know? Right. So Microsoft kind of has its work cut out for it, especially given that Windows 8.1 was so iffy. So the download of Windows 10 will first be available to Windows Insiders, and then it'll go yes. out to one group of users at a time in the U.S. Uh, is there any way at all for people to know when they're going to get it? Um, it's my understanding, though. I've only recently, since since uh, Windows 10 became, got closer to launch, is my first time using Windows in actually some time. Uh, but it's my understanding that there's a Get Windows app that tells you that that's going to give you at least a vague sense of when you're going to get in line for Windows 10. Uh, that said, if you haven't already reserved your place in line, you're probably already way behind. Uh, they're doing it this way because they don't want a crush of people to, to take the servers down. You, you see it every time Apple releases a new iPhone update where everyone tries it at once and then servers go down, downloads take forever and ever, nobody's happy. So when I got that pop-up pop up that says, you know, you're eligible to download, then it was, it, as soon as you did it, you got in line. That's right. If, as long as you as long as you went through it at that point, and all of that said, I can't imagine they're going to keep people waiting too long. And then the other advantage here is that by the time that your download rolls around, uh, the very earliest problems with the final Windows 10, they'll probably have identified them and solved them. So like the issue that we were just talking about before, ideally that's going to be you know the, the reason they give it to Windows Insiders first is that it buys Microsoft a little more time to find these bugs and fix them before. They go out to everyone else over the next couple of weeks. Well, they sort of said it's like you get it first because you know we want to thank you, but really it's, you get it first because we want you to try stuff that might not be working. It can be two things. I mean, they've already signed. They've already signed up for for, for the super beta test, being the bleeding edge adopters. So why not do it again? You know. So what if I want to be the very first person to buy it in a box? I don't want to download it. Um, can I go wait in line somewhere um, at midnight uh, tomorrow night? Not really. Uh, Microsoft's doing events all over the country. They're doing like I know in, the, in one of the New York stores, they're having um, they're having the, the Women's World Cup team stop by um, different places. I think in the Vegas store at Sugar Ray Leonard stopping by signing autographs to promote it. But there's not going to be real overnight. There's not going to be real overnight launches. In fact, um, you won't even be able to buy a boxed version of Windows 10 like on disk or on a flash drive until late August. It's looking like they really want you to download it instead. And so they've they've talked a lot about how it's going to be seamless across all of my devices. Uh, will I be able to get it on a Windows tablet or Windows phone anytime soon? As long as you're running. So as far as the phone, they're being a little more coy about the release date there. Um, for for desktop and tablet, which is going to be 99% of people anyway, um, for desktop and tablet, it's going to be um, 
over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, it'll work the same across either as long as it's running Windows 7 or 8.1 or 8, 8.1. So what uh, Windows 10 feature are you most looking forward to? I think Cortana is pretty cool. Um, I know I may or may not be in the minority here, but I think that talking to my devices is handy, especially when I'm feeling very, very lazy. And Cortana is, she has the best of Siri that she has a very high rate of speech recognition um, and, and just general usability, but also the Google Now kind of features where it gives you contextual information. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Cortana serves you up news articles she thinks you'd be interested in, local weather, that kind of stuff. Uh, based on your preferences, she learns over time. And she's based on the same character from the Halo series, so she's got kind of a personality. <laughs> and so like all of these, I mean, it, it, you, she'll be more efficient if you have all your photos on OneDrive and if you have your calendar yeah. and your email. That's kind of the weakness. It's all, So much of it is underpinned by Bing, and Bing is a lot better than it used to be. But at the same time, you know, Google is still the... The, the, the unstoppable juggernaut in search, in photo storage, in so much stuff. And Microsoft's gaining significant ground, and the products are, are legitimately getting a lot better. But I think that a lot of Windows 10 users are going to be a little surprised at, at how much uh, Microsoft services that they may not already be on, you need to make it really sing, uh, which is Microsoft's sinister master plan for giving Windows 10 out for free in the first place, after all. Well, right. I mean, they have, you know, that I don't know if you use the if you have an iOS device, but, you know, I use mm -hmm. Outlook on my phone and I love it. And, you know, there's all these they've thrown all of these great the calendar apps that they bought. And then, you know, they they just uh, released that sent, it was send for email. It was like supposed to yes. be this great. And then it's going to be instant. You know, you it's going to turn your email into instant messenger. And I was so excited. And I right. went to it and you have to have a 360 account for work or for school in order to use it. And it was the first time where I thought, oh, there it is. You know, no, that's, exactly right. that's, that's exactly their, their strategy here. And they're hoping and they're, they're, they're hoping that Windows 10, that once you upgrade, there's, you're going to run into enough stuff like that, that eventually you're going to pull out your credit card. And then once you have, once they have your credit card, it's like in for a penny, in for a pound. They want you to buy. They want you to buy Office 365 subscriptions. They want you to buy a Groove Music subscription. They want you on Xbox Live. They want you to buy an app from the App Store. Just all of this stuff is just putting money into their pocket, and that's why they can give out Windows 10 for free. Well, Matt, thank you so much. Matt Weinberger is a tech reporter at Business Insider on Twitter. You're at Gameoid, G-A-M-O-I-D. Thank you so much for joining us. Ah, thanks for having me. Take care. You too. Coming up, an unplanned parenthood hack and how many fake iPhones can nine people make? But first, this episode is brought to you by Braintree, code for easy online payments. If you are a mobile app developer, you should take a look at Braintree. Braintree is the payment solution used by companies like Uber, and Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, and Muntree. Braintree has made the payment experience in these apps seamless, and now you can add a similar experience to your own app. They have excellent customer service and very simple integration. Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly. And Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth. Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience. So check it out for yourself. Braintree scaled with these companies from early-stage startups to successful companies they are today. So Braintree can scale with your business, too, from processing your first dollar to your billionth, no matter how a customer would like to pay. Braintree gives you a full-stack payment solution support for all payment types your customers might want. So start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more all with a single single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash tech night. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The Verge reports that the NSA will stop examining your stored telephone records. They also announced today that they would destroy the Section 215 bulk telephone metadata when the obligation to preserve the information has expired 
later this year. The metadata that was collected illegally from millions of Americans, uh, the change in policy was prompted by the passage of the USA Freedom Act, which allegedly stopped the information collecting back in June. Today, Google says you no longer have to have a Google Plus account to share content, communicate with others, and create a channel on YouTube. Now, all you need is a Google account. The company says the change will roll out in stages over the next several months and will eventually include all of their services. This ends Google's four-year battle to become a competitor to Facebook. Writing in a Google Plus update, Google exec Bradley Horowitz admitted that some users found the sharing features in Google Plus confusing, and he promises a better experience for people using Google Photos and YouTube separately. According to the Daily Dot, anti-abortion hackers have broken into the database of Planned Parenthood, where they access the names and email addresses of the organization's employees. A representative from the hacker group told the Daily Dot that they would also begin releasing internal emails soon. Planned Parenthood only knew that their databases had been infiltrated when they were informed by the Daily Dot. And this is just one in a string of recent hacks like the one at Sony and the dating website Ashley Madison and at the United States Office of Personnel Management where hackers seem not to be after credit cards but after names and information that could be used for blackmail or public embarrassment. This morning on Tech News Today, Mike Elgin reported that Chinese police have broken up a Beijing factory that produced more than 41,000 fake iPhones. Some of these phones were reportedly sold in the United States. Nine suspects were arrested, including the husband and wife team who ran the operation. According to the Wall Street Journal, the factory sold iPhones and ribbon cables worth over $19.4 million just last year. And finally, the timeless question, if a drone fires a gun in the woods and you don't post it on YouTube, will you be arrested for it? Last week, we told you about a teen who posted a video of his homemade drone firing a handgun in the woods on his Connecticut property. The police learned of the drone because the 18-year-old posted a video of it on YouTube, the video we're watching now. They were understandably concerned, but found that the teen had broken no laws. Since we reported the story, however, the Middletown Press says that the team has, teen has been arrested, but not for flying a shooting drone. The kid was charged with interfering with an officer and failure to obey an officer's signal. The officer attempted to keep the teen from leaving the scene and a physical altercation ensued. In a somewhat related story, the Future of Life Institute posted a letter today about the risks of autonomous weapons. Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and Steve Wozniak have already signed the letter. The Future of Life Institute are the folks in charge of being afraid of the potential risks stemming from the development of human-level artificial intelligence. And today they specifically called out armed quadcopters as a mark of the beginning of a military AI arms race. Now, to, to be fair, the kid's handgun-equipped quadcopter was probably under his control and not autonomous. As we mentioned when we originally reported the story, the kid's father was very upset that people were calling his quadcopter a drone because drones imply a lack of control. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash technewstonight with a number two. You can like us to get links to the show when it's posted and the stories we talk about. And if you want to be part of the conversation, just post a comment on the stories that we post and we will read them right here on the show. You can also subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. You can write to us at tn2 at twit.tv. And of course, watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.